This is a video teaching you what you need to learn so that you can do asymptotic Bode plots. A lot of the theory will be in the notes that I'll post a link to in the description. And this is a little more about actually drawing the shape than a detailed analysis of why um, everything is the way it is. But just a quick review, a Bode plot is the magnitude and phase plotted against the log of frequency. And what we do is in a transfer function, we let s equal j omega, and then we assume that it's a sine wave or a collection of sine waves, and that these sine waves have been um, oscillating forever in the past and forever in the future. And you have a transfer function here of a low pass filter. And when you do that substitution, you see that there is a complex part and a real part. I mean, an imaginary part and a real part. And the magnitude is given uh, 20 log. And this is the square root of the real part of the transfer function plus the imaginary part. And the phase is just the arctangent of the imaginary part of the transfer function and the real part. And what we're going to do is just do these three shapes when the transfer cons um, function is constant with frequency, increasing with frequency, and decreasing with frequency. And what we're going to find is that there's really three fundamental shapes to magnitude, right? just put magnitude right here right if k is constant this is going to be constant if s if we have sk it's going to be increasing with a certain slope okay and since this is a logarithmic progression this logarithmic progression is plotted as a straight line. And then we have uh, k divided by s. Something going down. And that's really it. Something is, the magnitude of these are flat, increasing, or going down. As far as the phase is concerned, in these three cases, they're all constant. They're just at um, different levels. So let's go into a little more detail. So let's say the transfer function is just a constant gain of k, right? Everything is real. The magnitude of k is just 20 log k, and the phase is zero. Because if I plot k on the complex plane, I have an arrow just going in the positive uh, real direction. There's no imaginary part, right? And so, you know, if k equaled 1, 20 log of 1 is 0 dB. If k equaled 10, that would be 20 dB. If k equaled 0 0.1, that would be minus 20 dB. So just to plot it, what you do is you have your frequencies all laid out. And when the gain is constant, it really doesn't matter, right? Um, later on, I'll tell you how to, to set the frequency axis. But I would just drag a line across for, 20, for 0 dB. And then, yeah, the phase is zero degrees, right? If k were equal to 10, I would just draw a line across for 20 dB, or k equals 10. And the phase is still zero, even though I've drawn it a little off there. And finally, 
if k equals 0.1, I just draw a line across. k is 0.1 or minus 20 dB. And again, the phase is zero degree. And what we'll find when we're doing asymptotic Bode plots is that um, you'll either have a range where things are constant, decreasing, or increasing. And so you'll take these flat, decreasing, increasing shapes and, and turn them into uh, more complicated Bode plots for more complicated systems. So now we have h of s equals sk, right? So we set s equal to j omega, and we take the, uh, the magnitude of that, and we get 20 log omega k, all right? The phase is 90 because things were pointed in the, the positive j direction, and it's now kw, and so you can see that that's going to be 90 degrees no matter what. Now let's do some examples. K equals to 0.1. K equals to 1. And K equals to 10. Now because this is on a logarithmic scale and I'm plotting the log of something Really, I'm going to have a line that's going up 20 dB per decade, all right? The trick is, is where is it going to cross? And the easiest way is to look at the gain. And in this case, I'm going to do one first. So when is this going to be zero dB? Well, if K is one, omega, if omega is one, one times one is one, that's zero dB. So, that gives me 0 dB, and then this just gives me a positive 20 uh, dB per decade slope. So, oops. all right. So that was 20 dB over a decade, 20 dB over a decade. And then I can go the other way. And then I have K equals one or one times s. Now what about if k is equal to 10? What makes that one? Well, a tenth. So now, that's my, where I'll be at zero dB. So I go down minus 20 over a decade, and then I can just kind of draw that. And these are parallel. What if k is equal to 0 0.1? Well, when omega is 10, it'll be 10 times 0 0.1 is 1. So that's right here. So down, over, down, over, down, over. Okay, these lines are in parallel. They all have a 20 dB rise for a decade of frequency slope. And all the phases will be 90 degrees. Okay. Now here, what if we have an integrator, or k divided by s, 
Then we have k divided by j omega, which is minus k times j divided by omega. Take the magnitude of that, and you get 20 log k divided by omega, or minus 20 k omega. And that's where you can see we're going to have a minus 20 dB per decade slope. We have minus j, right? So that's why we have a minus 90 degrees phase. So again, we'll start with k equals to 1. What makes this go to 0 dB, right? So 1, right? 1 times 1 is 1. Log of 1 is 0. So that would be right here. Except now we're going down minus 20 dB per decade. And I get that. If k equals 10, what makes that 0 dB? Right? Actually, scratch what I just said there. Um, sorry, I'm a bit running out of time. So I'm just going to keep this here. What makes this one? Because, yeah, that would have been omega over k. My bad. So what makes that one? When omega is 10. And then the final one, this one is equal to 0.1. So if what makes this one is when omega is 0.1. And I can almost just do it by, by i now knowing that I'll be in parallel. And then the phases are all minus 90 degrees. Um, I'll make sure that I have that uh, properly done in, in the notes, but that's pretty much it in drawing these shapes. And just to kind of that um, one divided by s plus 1 transfer function, well, there's just a couple of reasons is that when omega is a lot less than this, right? I'm going to make it a little bigger. When omega is a lot less than 1, it's just going to be flat, right? And then when omega is a lot bigger than 1, it's actually going to trace out this curve. And the, um, you'll see that the asymptotic phase does this. But that's another lesson. That's where we're headed. But basically, things are either flat or they're going down or they're flat with phase. Um, and with magnitude, it's either flat going up or going down.